title winning campaign, the celebrations oh so sweet for captain Vincent Company, and the unbeaten run rolls on for the 76ers in the NBA. We'll tell you exactly how Manchester City won the league in a moment, but first, we'll draw your attention to matters at the other end of the table. Monday's big game is at the London Stadium, where West Ham United hosts Stoke. Both teams are fighting the drop, but it's Stoke who have more to worry about. Paul Lambert's team are second from bottom. Their 2-1 defeat to Spurs last week leaves them with a lot of work to do with just five games remaining. Novak Djokovic has worries of his own. The former world number one has been struggling for form and fitness so far in 2018. He's the main attraction at the Monte Carlo Masters on Monday as he tries to turn his season around. Rafa Nadal is the defending champion and is aiming for a record-extending 11th title. And after a thrilling end to the regular season, the NBA playoffs have a lot to live up to. So far, things haven't gone Miami's way. They trail the Philadelphia 76ers 1-0, heading into Monday's Game 2. Ben Simmons uh, helped to uh, get them over the line with uh, this slam in the third quarter. It finished 130 to 103 and takes Philadelphia's unbeaten run to 17 games. Game two is in Philadelphia later, and the Heat know they need to be stronger in the final quarter. We knew Manchester City were going to win the league, but few would have predicted them clinching the title on Sunday. Their 3-1 win over Spurs on Saturday put them back in the driving seat, but they needed neighbours Manchester United to slip up on Sunday. West Bromwich Albion, the team at the foot of the table, surprised everyone with a 1-0 win at Old Trafford. That means Pep Guardiola's team have an unassailable 16-point lead over United. Here's how Jose Mourinho reacted. I was the first because I knew it, you know, I knew it, you know, grey hair, lots of years and years in the, um, in the top competitions, of course, I, I knew it, they, they, they were the best team, sooner or later they were going to get the, they were going to get the, the points, so no, no dramas when the best team wins the, the league, no dramas. PSG are champions in Ligue 1 and talk about winning it, winning it in style even. Their 7-1 demolition of Monaco secured them the title on Sunday. Over in the Netherlands, PSV Eindhoven have clinched a 24th Eredivisie league title after beating Ajax 3-0. Steven Bergwijn scored their third goal. The win leaves them with 80 points, meaning they have an unassailable 10-point lead over second-placed Ajax. It's their third championship in four seasons. John Rahm fired a closing five under par 67 to win the Open de España in Madrid on Sunday. He becomes the sixth Spaniard to win the tournament since it achieved European tour status in 1972, finishing on 20 under par overall. Rahm follows players of the calibre of Sevi Ballesteros and Sergio Garcia in winning his home event in Madrid. He ended two shots clear of the Republic of Ireland's Paul Dunn to secure a third win from just 19 European tour events. That's how you do it. You can get all the latest uh, sports news at our website, bbc.com forward slash sport. But from me and the rest of the sport team, that's your Monday Sport Briefing. And your Monday Business Briefing is coming up very soon with me. So I'll see you then. Morning. The last time somewhere in the UK had a high of 25 degrees, it was the 29th of August 2018. Well, guess what? Somewhere in the southeast this week, there is the potential to see 25 degrees. It's not just the southeast, widespread temperatures in the low 20s across the UK is expected Wednesday into Thursday. Something to look forward to. But for Monday morning, it is a relatively quiet start. This area of low pressure slowly starting to show its hand by the end of the day. But ahead of it, we'll see a little bit of showery rain across Scotland. That will ease away. Cloudy skies for many, but hopefully with some brightness here and there, the best of the sunshine, perhaps likely across the extreme south. Highs of 13 to 15 degrees. But it'll turn increasingly windy. Gales likely with the arrival of this area of low pressure. And the front will move in, bringing some rain, some of it heavy through Northern Ireland, 
northwest England and Scotland as we go through Monday night into Tuesday morning. So some heavy rain for time, but the weather front really will weaken substantially as it pushes its way south and east. Behind it, a little bit fresher with a few scattered showers and highs likely of 14 or 15 degrees. But ahead of that front, if we keep some sunshine coming through eastern England, southeast England, we could see 18 or 19 and that'll feel quite pleasant. Now, as we move it out of Tuesday into Wednesday, we need to look across to the near continent with this high pressure building, and that's going to be the driving force in the story. It'll deflect weather fronts from the Atlantic up into the northwest, but at the same time, around that high in a clockwise direction, the winds will start to come in from a warm, dry southeasterly, and that's going to be the reason why those temperatures are set to climb above the average for this time of year. So get out and enjoy it if you can. The best of the sunshine on Wednesday across central and southern England, eventually into Scotland across the borders. We'll see some showery rain through Northern Ireland and Western Scotland for a time. So here not quite as warm, 16 or 17 degrees, but highest values in the southeast likely of 23. That's the mid 70s. Lighter winds again, lots of sunshine around on Thursday, just a little bit of fair weather cloud. But generally speaking, Thursday looks likely to be the best day of the week if it's warmth and sunshine you're after and that is when we could see 25 degrees 77 Fahrenheit and yes it's only the middle of April take care we were just two black boys waiting to get on a bus all I wanted to do is to get justice. They're hoping that I would just shut up and go away. There was something badly wrong about this investigation. There were police officers who felt they were above the law. There's the England before Stephen, and there's the England after Stephen. The definitive story of a murder that changed the nation, told over three nights. Stephen starts Tuesday at 9 on BBC One. All right, take hey, a breath. That quiet, calm year we wanted, Christian, it's not going to happen, right? Exactly that. And there is already full-on drama in the White House. A long time today, and there were all sorts...